Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 16th of October. Coronavirus infections rise to 7.37 million as India heads towards festive season. US Taliban agree to reset commitments to reduce violence in Afghanistan. And UN rights chief slams death penalty for rapists in Bangladesh. And now for all the details. India's coronavirus cases tally stood at 7.37 million on Friday with more than 112,000 deaths so far. Authorities have urged people to follow COVID-19 appropriate behavior in view of the upcoming festival and winter season, which pose additional challenges in the fight against the pandemic. India's tally of coronavirus infections stood at 7.37 million on Friday, having risen by 63,371 in the last 24 hours, with 112,161 deaths so far. Though the overall recovery rate is 87.56% and active cases have been on the downslide, government experts are worried about an escalation in cases during the upcoming festival season along with the onset of winters, which pose additional challenges in the fight against the pandemic. With Hindu festival of Navratri or Nine Nights beginning from Saturday, authorities of Sri Mata Vaishnu Devi Shrine in Jammu and Kashmir and Mansa Devi Temple in Haryana state have made special arrangements to ensure safety as the limit of number of pilgrims has also been increased. COVID-19 rapid antigen testing, sanitizing, wearing masks and social distancing have been made mandatory. बहुत अच्छे अरेंजमेंट है सिक्योरिटीज काफी हैं कोरोना को देखते हुए कोविड की रिपोर्ट्स सबसे मांगी गई है बिना कोविड रिपोर्ट के आप एंटर नहीं कर सकते और ये चीज यहां से नहीं शुरू से दिल्ली से जब हम आ रहे हैं तो जगह जगह पे जहां पे भी टॉल टैक्स थे या जो भी पुलिस के बैरियर थे वहां पर उन्होंने प्रॉपर चेकिंग करी है Despite rising cases, cash-short state governments are still reluctant to stop people from venturing out during the money-spinning Hindu festivals of Durga Puja next week and Diwali in mid-November as they generate vital income for many people with bumper buying of gifts and sweets. India on Thursday asserted that the Union territories of Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir have been and will remain an integral part of India and that China has no local standing to comment on its internal matters. This came days after China said it did not recognize the Union territory of Ladakh in response to inauguration of key bridges built by India in areas of strategic importance. India on Thursday asserted that the Union territories of Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir have been and will remain an integral part of India and that China has no local standi to comment on its internal matters. The assertion by India's foreign ministry came days after China said it did not recognize the Union territory of Ladakh illegally set up by India in response to Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurating 44 key bridges built in areas of strategic importance, including in Ladakh, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim and Jammu and Kashmir. The Indian territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh have been, are and would remain an integral part of India. China has no locus standi to comment on India's internal matters. India and China have been engaged in a bitter standoff since earlier this year, after 20 Indian soldiers died in clashes with the Chinese troops in Ladakh's Galwan Valley in June. Both sides have held a series of diplomatic and military talks to resolve the border standoff. However, no breakthrough has been achieved to defuse the situation. India's capital has been recording poor to very poor air quality levels in different areas over the past one week. 
Although wind speeds brought slight improvement to Delhi's air quality, it was still recorded in poor category on Friday. Holding a banner, a nine-year-old climate crusader staged a protest over air pollution in the national capital. Nine-year-old climate crusader Lisi Priya Kangu Jam staged a demonstration outside Indian Parliament at midnight on Friday, demanding immediate action over increasing air pollution in capital New Delhi. One of the world's youngest climate change activists, Kangu Jam is leading a youth movement calling for Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and lawmakers to pass a new law aimed at capping carbon emissions in the world's third largest producer of greenhouse gases. Our leaders don't hear our voice uh, in the daytime, so I'm trying to do the protest uh, in the nighttime, a and oh, and I want I want our leaders to take immediate climate action to fight this air pollution. On Friday, Delhi recorded an AQI air quality index of 251 at 10 a.m. local time. The 24-hour average AQI was 315 on Thursday, the worst since February 12. New Delhi has been recording poor to very poor air quality levels in different areas over the past one week. Although wind speeds brought slight improvement to Delhi's air quality, it was still recorded in poor category on Friday. Air pollution in Delhi is a year-round problem which can be attributed to unfavorable meteorological conditions, farm fires in neighboring regions and local sources of pollution. Moving on. Online department employees in illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan recently held a general body meeting to raise the demand of equal pay and allowances at par with other government employees. Highlighting exploitation, they blame the authorities have kept on delaying the process for the past several years. Demanding equal pay, time scale and allowances, along with 30% quota, all line department employees association in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baldistan recently organized a general body meeting. The employees highlighted they are working at nominal salaries for past several years and are not given the same incentives at par with the Secretariat employees. They want to intensify protests against the government if their demands are not met. यानी ऐसा तरीके से जैसे और इदारे हैं उनको देखा जाता है इसी तरह हमें भी ऐसे नजरों से देखा जाए तो इन्शाअल्लाह ताला ये उनके हक में भी बेहतरी है और हमारे हक में भी बेहतरी है अगर खुदा न खासता कुछ इस किस्म की मतलब यानी बात हो गई कि वो हमें मुसलसल नेगलेक्ट करते ही रहेंगे और बिल्कुल हमारे ऊपर जुल्म बरबरियत जो है वो करते रहेंगे तो इस तरह तो जिसके ऊपर जुल्म होता है वो लाजमी बात है कि वो मतलब रोके रोड पे तो आ जाता है लोकल्स एंड गवर्नमेंट वर्कर्स इन गिलगित बल्दिस्तान हैव टू ऑफ्टन हिट द स्ट्रीट्स टू डिमांड इवन द बेसिक राइट्स the illegally occupied region has also been swept by a wave of decent recently against Pakistan's plan to change its legal status and hold elections in violations of UN resolutions. In news from Afghanistan, US Special Envoy Zalbain Khalizad said on Thursday he had struck an agreement with the Taliban to reset their commitments under a troop withdrawal deal and reduce the number of casualties in Afghanistan. This comes as Afghanistan's Helmand province has seen heavy fighting this week despite ongoing efforts for peace. U.S. Special Envoy Zalme Khalilzad said on Thursday he had struck an agreement with the insurgent Taliban to reset their commitments under a troop withdrawal deal and reduce the number of casualties in Afghanistan, which has seen heavy fighting in southern Helmand province. Khalil Zad in a series of tweets said he and General Scott Miller, the commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, held several meetings with the Taliban and agreed to reset actions by strictly adhering to implementation of all elements of the U.S. Taliban agreement. He said at present, too many Afghans are dying. With the reset, numbers are expected to drop significantly. A February deal between the United States and the Taliban in Doha said Foreign forces would leave Afghanistan by May 2021 in exchange for counter-terrorism guarantees from the Taliban, which agreed to negotiate a permanent ceasefire and a power-sharing formula with the Afghan government. Diplomats and officials have warned 
that rising violence is sapping the trust required for successful peace talks in Doha. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Bangladesh has introduced death penalty for rape cases. A Bangladeshi court on Thursday sentenced five men to death for the 2012 gang rape of a 15-year-old girl amid growing public anger over rampant sexual violence. Following this, UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet said rape is monstrous, but death penalty is not the answer. UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet said on Thursday that sentencing rapists to death is not an appropriate punishment even for such a heinous crime. Her comments came after a Bangladesh court sentenced five men to death for the 2012 gang rape of a 15-year-old girl on Thursday. It marked the first conviction since the government of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina this week introduced the death penalty for rape. Bachelet cited the law change in Bangladesh but also called in a number of other countries to impose the death penalty for rape. One thing as it may be to impose draconian punishment on those who carry out such monstrous acts, we must not allow ourselves to commit further violations. Bangladesh's government this week approved an amendment that would allow for the death penalty in rape cases as anger grew in South Asian country over incidents of sexual assault. Social media is extremely powerful and a Pakistani tea vendor, Arshad Khan, is one of the best examples that proves this fact. He became an internet sensation overnight for his good looks in 2016. Four years on, Arshad is trending once more, this time for opening his cafe in capital city, Islamabad. In 2016, an 18-year-old tea vendor, Arshad Khan, at a local market tea store became an overnight sensation in Pakistan after his photo went viral on the internet with many swooning over his good looks. Four years on, Arshad is trending once more, this time for opening his cafe in capital city of Islamabad. Naming it Cafe Chaiwala Rooftop, the 22-year-old used the moniker he is known for since the social media whirlwind brought him international fame, modeling gigs and even acting jobs. The blue-eyed tea seller shot to viral fame after the picture of him brewing tea at a Sunday market bazaar was posted on Instagram. It was swiftly shared thousands of times, making him a social media sensation. उसके बाद फिर ये हुआ कि मैंने काम स्टार्ट किया ये स्पीड में आया हूँ स्पीड में ये तो ज़्यादा आप लोगों से ज़्यादा बेहतर एक्टर या मॉडल ही जानते हैं कि क्या होता है कुछ अच्छे प्रोजेक्ट्स भी मिले हैं कभी होते हैं कभी नहीं होते हैं तो ये सलसला चलता रहा अभी मैंने अपना जो कैफे लॉन्च किए वो मैंने इसलिए किया कि मुसलसल ये एक बिजनेस है कुछ न कुछ यहाँ से आता रहेगा बट द स्टारी आइड यंग मैन हैज एन इवन बिगर ड्रीम इन साइड Khan, an ethnic Pashtun, hopes to use his fame and cafe to set up a school for impoverished children. Exiled Tibetans in India have welcomed U.S. appointment of human rights officials to oversee human rights issues in Tibet. China has, however, lashed out at Washington's move, saying the U.S. wants to destroy the region's stability. Exiled Tibetans living in India welcome the appointment of a human rights official as Tibet coordinator by the U.S. U.S. President Donald Trump's administration on Wednesday appointed the senior U.S. human rights official as special coordinator for Tibetan issues, a move that has angered China. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that Robert Destro, Assistant Secretary of State for Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, would assume the additional post which has been vacant since the start of Trump's term in 2017. This, this announcement by Ma Mike Pompeo, it's a clear indication that the way in which U.S. Gov government regards China and in terms of, uh, you know, China is now not going to be get away easily with what they have been doing. China refused to deal with the U.S. coordinator, seeing it as interference in its internal affairs. China seized control over Tibet in 1950 in what it describes as a peaceful liberation that helped the remote Himalayan region throw off its feudalist past. 
But critics, led by exiled spiritual leader the Dalai Lama, say Beijing's rule amounts to the cultural genocide. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.